Welcome to the house of the Lord today. I hope you came expecting to receive. You know, we were practicing, and I just sensed the presence of God already Amen. as we were worshiping. You know, I know, but I always love to worship, so um, I just already sensed that God wants to move in a powerful way. So I hope we open our hearts and our minds to let the Lord move us, to let the Lord speak to our hearts. I'm going to continue my series today, shocking, but the, the Lord, I, I actually am excited about the message not because it's for me, but because it's from the Lord, and I, I think you'll you'll uh, find it interesting today, also. So, praise God. We're still planning on the 19th. We're going to have a church dinner here at the church downstairs, and um, we'll be having it catered because the travel lodge is not doing anything. Um, so, uh, we're going to have it right here, and we'll have it catered. So. There will be a sign-up sheet. It's not there yet, but there will be a sign-up sheet, and it will be the 19th Sunday following service. We'll have um, uh, a dinner downstairs. So praise the Lord. Let's enjoy the presence of the God today and enjoy. Uh, let him minister to you. Glory to God. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to come into your house to worship you. Lord, I pray as we're about to open our hearts and our minds, as we're about to lift our voices, that you, Lord, would once again inhabit our praise, that you would dwell in this place, Lord. I already sense your presence here. So, Lord, I pray that you would minister. And I pray that we would be open vessels, that, Lord, we would have ears to hear what you would say. And, Lord, our spirit would be open lord that you might pour into us today lord that you might encourage us today that you might strengthen us empower us and lord lead us and direct us by the power of your holy spirit lord this is the day that the lord has made lord we rejoice and we are glad in it lord i pray that your blessing would be upon people lord that are here today and those unable to be here lord i pray that you would just minister to those that will watch or listen to this by broadcast, Lord. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Glory to God. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is triumph gloriously. The voice of I have fell into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is triumph gloriously. The voice of I
Savior lives. He rules the world with truth. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. We praise your name. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
said, Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you. Today.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Lord. We praise your holy name. You're holy, Lord. You're worthy. You're mighty. You're awesome in power. You're awesome in this place. Who is to worship but thee, Lord? Who is there to worship? We worship you in spirit and in truth. We come before you with singing. We come before you with thanksgiving and praise and worship. We come before you with confidence and expectation. come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. And you are always faithful. You are always there to answer our prayer. To hear our cry. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. Lord, today in this place, as we've assembled to worship and praise you, Lord, Hallelujah, glory. As we've lifted up your name, Lord, I pray today, as sure as you're here in this place, I sensed your presence right from the very beginning. As I walked through the door, I sensed your presence, and I knew this was a place where you abide here. Lord, I thank you today that we serve a living God that has nothing too difficult for you. Lord, I pray today we lift up those in a physical need, Lord. Those with sickness, those with infirmities, Lord. I pray for miracles. I pray, Lord, for miracles today. Testimonies of your power, your love, and your mercy. Your healing strength, Lord. Bring healing to bodies in this place. And those who aren't able to even be here, Lord. But those that, Lord, might listen or Watch this. Lord, you are bound by building walls, by jurisdictions. You are everywhere. And Lord, I pray today your power would be released. Testimonies would be made. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, come before you 
with our needs, Lord, with all prayer and supplication. And we give you thanks for the answer, for your answer, Lord. Lord, for all the needs that are presented here. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would meet the needs of your people today. Lord, today maybe somebody needs to hear from you, and you already have spoken. Somebody just needs to feel the loving embrace of your Holy Spirit. Somebody just needs to know that Jesus is the answer. When all other answers can't really come to be an answer, Jesus, you are the answer. You are the only one, Lord. Lord, give us the strength to put our trust in you, to put our faith in you, Lord, in all circumstances. Lord, give us the strength and the endurance, Lord, to run your race and run it with determination to win. Having not attained, we press on and press forward. Lord, I pray that you would encourage somebody today. Pick someone up that has fallen. Heal a wounded heart. Touch lives. Change lives. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself, Lord, today. Reveal your power and your love, Lord, and your mercy and your grace. Feel yourself today. Harabasi toro da da ba 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 ki toro da 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 ba ba ba. Ramasito, Rabashito, Rarama. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
The Lord would say, heed my words that I have spoken. Heed those words that I have said. For it is more than words. It is your life-sustaining power to follow what I have given instruction to do. And I have spoken to you individually. I have spoken to you on your own time without you being here in this place. And I have spoken to you in your prayer time. And I have spoken to you in times when you've called upon me. And all other times, no matter where you may have been. And I have spoken to you. And then I have confirmed it here today. Heed my words, saith the Lord. For I ask that you would heed them for your own good, saith the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, for I have spoken for your good. I have spoken for your eternal safety. I have spoken to you that you might be strong. I have spoken to you that you might be empowered by me, saith the Lord. I have spoken to you that you might heed the call of your heavenly Father. I have spoken to you because I love you more than you can understand, saith the Lord. Heed the words that I have spoken, for you know that it is I that have spoken. Hear me, saith the Lord. Follow me, saith the Lord. Keep my words in your heart, saith the Lord, and you shall see that I shall make all the difference in your life and in the world, saith the Lord. Though they may be trials around you, saith the Lord, though they may be rough waters, you shall triumph gloriously, saith the Lord. You shall triumph gloriously, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Lord, give us the power. Give us the strength, Lord. Hallelujah, glory. Give us the strength. Hallelujah. Let's sing one more song. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy
shout of praise today in the house of the Lord. Glory to God, we worship you, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God, we worship you, Lord. We praise 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 you, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. You are mighty to save, Lord. You are mighty, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Glad to have everybody back today. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. I'm going to continue with the series. I thought I was done. I told you, Darren handed me an article. <laughs> he said, hey, Pastor Tim, look at this article. It, uh, it's all about what you've been talking about. But it took me in a little bit different, deeper direction on a subject that we've already brushed over and we've already hit a few times. But I really want to... God is really doing something amazing if you put this all together. I know if you're like me, you don't remember everything that I've said over the last several months, obviously, in the messages, and I've tried to bring them together, not to bore you or to belabor it, but to go over all that God is trying to speak to us, because I believe that what these, this, these sermons, I don't just ask the Lord, I don't just get up here every Sunday just to, well, let me see what I can preach today. You know, I'll just point to, I want to really hear something from God because he knows what we all need and he knows what the people of God need to hear. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt that this series has been an important series that God has been speaking to us to understand the biblical basis of worship and praise and worship to the Lord, and how important it is to understand it in our lives. Glory to God. I, oh, you can tell I'm a little excited about this. It's going to be a little bit of preach and a little bit of teach today. We're going to turn to presence, or to Psalm 119, and I'll give you the title before I get all excited and keep going. Presence-centered worship that is singing the truth that is singing the truth. And where else can we go but to the Psalms? Psalm 119. Joyful are the people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful. Hmm. Joyful are the people that follow the instructions of the Lord. Verse 2. Joyful are those who obey His laws and search for Him with all their hearts. They do not compromise the evil with evil. They Walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteousness regulate your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord, 
Teach me your decrees. I have recited aloud all the regulations you have given us. I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. Lord, I thank you today for your word. I thank you today for the presence of your Holy Spirit here. I thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to minister to us when we worship and praise you. I thank you, Lord, that you're faithful to minister to us in your word, for you've given us your word. Now, Lord, as I am about to deliver your message, I pray that all of it would be you. And, Lord, that you would minister through me and that you would hide me behind the cross. And, Lord, that we would hear your words that you have to say today. And, Lord, that we would understand it and we would keep it. And, Lord, it would guide and direct our lives as you have so asked that we would do. And, Lord, I thank you and praise you today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Today I want to talk about the importance of singing the truth. Singing the truth. We're going to have a little science in here today. Neuroscience. Don't get nervous about me talking about neuroscience. What we sing when we praise and worship is as equally, if not more important, than the way we worship. Let me say that. What we sing when we praise and worship the Lord is as equally, if not more important, than the way we praise and worship the Lord. Now, I know that we've brushed over this subject a few or maybe several times over the series, and as we've been going through this series, but today I want us to gain a much deeper understanding of the importance of biblically sound praise and worship and singing the truth. Music is scientifically proven to have a powerful effect on the brain. Recent research shows that music can help in many aspects of the mind. The book, The Power of Music, by Elena, Elena Manis, who was a documentary author, says that scientists have found that music stimulates more parts of the brain than any other human function. Science, she also has said, science also but all confirms that humans are hardwired to respond to music. And further, that's why we see so many potential, we see so much potential in music's power to change the brain, I'm sorry, and affect the way it works. Music's potential to change the brain and the way it works. Now, this is based on research. If you were to search the internet, hypothetically speaking, I may have done that, about music's effect on the brain, you would find a lot of things. You're, there's a lot of research going on about that. Who would have thought? I didn't know that till I was doing the study for this. You will find much research that's being done in the neuroscience field as to how much the brain is affected by music. Now get this, and we'll put this together if our Heavenly Father is seeking people who will worship Him in spirit and in truth, then when we worship Him in spirit and in truth, there is a powerful effect on our spiritual and our human being. There's a powerful effect on us when we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. If we believe that God does everything for his purpose and reason and that nothing is by chance, then I would submit to you today that he has created our brain's sensitivity and reaction to music for his purpose and his reasons. Hence, 150 psalms were written to be sung for a reason. And I want you to follow this as we go along here 
I want to, don't yell hallelujah, but there's only two points to today's message. So I, I'm, I'm deviating from the three-point message. Singing the truth teaches us. That's my first point. Singing the truth, it gives us instruction. And it teaches us. Let's lay the foundation for this first, though. John chapter 1, verse 1. You'll know it. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and God was the Word. Or the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish. Now let's go to 2 Timothy 3.13. Paul speaking to Timothy. But evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. But you must re remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know that they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All Scripture, I want you to hold on to these next few verses in the, as we go through this. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And that is why David said in Psalm 119, 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I will praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decree. An author put this, said this, that hymn writers know him, not him as men, him as in or songs. Hymn writers know that what is learned in song is remembered long. What is heard in song is remembered long. And is that true? Well, if I said to you, tell me the alphabet, how many of you, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H I J K L M N O P, right? We all know that. How did we learn the alphabet? We learned it by that little jingle. The Psalms were written to be sung. And if you read through them, which I'm sure most of you have, and you will see that they express prayers. They express lamentations. They express praises to God. They express God's faithfulness. They express God's caring for his followers. They express God's fighting battles for his people. They express God's empowering over evil and darkness. Saints, when we're singing biblical truth, we're reciting in praise and worship the scriptures and its practical applications to our lives. That's what's important there. When we are singing biblically sound doctrinal songs in praise and worship, we are singing and praising the Bible and the biblical truth and, a, and singing it in our lives so that it can be practically applied to our lives. Isn't that what the Word of God is intended to do? It's not just a book for us to read, right? Oh, that's a nice story. I like that story in the Old Testament. Oh, that's a gory story. In the, in the New Testament, oh, I like that. It's not just stories. The Bible, the Word of God is intended to impact, to change our lives, to be a part of our lives. It should be a part of who we are because the Word of God is our, is our uh, textbook to follow. Amen? 
to be pr applied practically in our lives. And it, it needs, and God wants to use it to change our lives. Now, in a study in 2014, I don't even know if I'm saying Sarcamo, this, they did a study and they found that singing, among other things, singing enhanced short term memory and working memory and caregiver well-being, whereas music listening positively affected the quality of life. Hmm. Neuroscience has found that pairing music with information helps our brain retrieve that information with ease. Are you getting this, following this? It helps us retrieve music the Psalms were put to song. When the Bible is put to song, when it's, it's uh, not just, you know, I'm not just talking about the exact words of the Bible, but when the principles of the Bible, when the Bible itself and its principles are put into song and music and we use it to praise and worship the Lord, it has a, an effect on us and our brains. And we, it causes us to teach us the Bible and teach us how to practically apply it to our lives. So if science tells us that music paired with information helps our brain retrieve the information, now we can understand better why it's so important to sing praise and worship with biblical truth. I sing an awful lot, and it doesn't help my short-term memory. But it does help me with the Bible, so that's what's important, I guess. If you ask me to bring you something, I might not remember that for three or four weeks. But if you ask me a song, that I can come up with. Maybe not all the right words, but I can come up with the song. When we are facing with the battles, the trials, and the circumstances, the information that we need to retrieve is what is in God's Word and what He has spoken to us, not other sources. Somebody say amen to that with me. In countless interpretations of the messages in tongues here in this place, the Holy Spirit has told us not to look to the right, not to look to the left. Not to look around, but to look up to him, the author, the finisher of our faith. Look up to him where our strength comes from. Go to him. If the repetition of songs we sing or hear is not scripturally sound or correct, we may find ourselves being led astray in our thoughts or to take part in a practice that is in conflict with the word of God. Remember what I mentioned in the scripture in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. To really put this together and understand that scripture, you have to understand the beginning of the chapter and what the context of Paul is writing to Timothy about. In the beginning of the chapter, he's writing to Timothy about deceivers. We have to look at the perspective of what in the context. He's talking to Timothy and giving him instruction about the evil, the deception, and the ungodly behavior that he will encounter. And for us, that we will encounter in the last days. Hmm. Now follow me, follow through here. Deceivers. It's easy to be deceived when our praise and worship does not consist of scripturally sound doctrine and truth. Now remember what I said, I'm not saying that every song has to have the words from the Bible, 
But what I'm saying is that the song and the, the words, the lyrics of the song need to be uh, founded in the doctrine and the principles need to be true to the, whole, to the word of God. It can't be something that is not true in the word of God. Because if we sing it over and over again, it's bringing to our memory something that is not true. Something that isn't what God had intended us to get from it. And while it may not be intentionally evil, it still is not scripturally true. You know, it's not scripturally evil. It's not blaspheming the Lord. But yet it, it doesn't hold up to the scripture and the principles of the Bible. In Exodus chapter 15, when we talk about instruction and teaching, um, after they had gotten past the Red Sea, in verse 1, then saying Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake saying, you might recognize it, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my God in song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is, is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are all drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom of, as a stone. And then verse 20 says that Miriam and all the women joined in. And the prophetess and the sister of Aaron took a timbrel, a tambourine in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrel and with dances. And the Miriam answered them, sing unto the Lord. For he hath triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider hath thrown into the sea. It says, and Miriam answered them. I wonder if they were singing around. You know, the guys started, I will sing unto the Lord. And then they started, I will sing unto the Lord where he is. Ah, can you just see it? I want you to understand something here. When they... they God had just brought them through the Red Sea on dry ground. I think they were a little excited when they watched the waters come back and destroy Pharaoh and all of those soldiers and all their chariots. And they sigh, we'll sing unto the Lord, for he is trying gloriously. The horse and rider fell into the sea. In that, right there, that song we sang this morning is taken right out of the Scripture. It teaches us what happened. What happened there? Well, we sing triumphantly, just like they did because the horse and rider was thrown into the, into the sea. All the chariots and the, all of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's men. Moses and Miriam saying of the triumph of the Lord at the Red Sea. And their song captures the miracle and the events of the miracle. And today the song is still sung. Yeah, I know it's an old song, but, you know, I'm one of those people that doesn't throw out the old. You add new, but you don't throw out before. You can always go back to it. And they, they go on, the Lord is my strength and song, and he's become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he hath cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also, also are drowned in the Red Sea, and the depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. That's powerful truth to live by. That's for us today. God made a way where there seemed to be no way. There seemed to be no way. But God stepped in and separated the waters. 
He can roll back the waters. He can roll back those waters. And that's truths to live by. And we see this throughout the Psalms. We see this same idea throughout all of the book of Psalms. Expressions in song that are useful to teach us what is true. Does this sound familiar? And to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Biblically based praise and worship that teaches and instructs us in God's word. That's what it's all about. The writer of the article, Jen Wilkin, says this, By Wednesday, a pastor's three sermon points are forgotten. Now, I know that's not the case here, but... But, a, but the chorus of the worship song is still being hummed, and, is me, and its message is repeated in our brain. This is amazing. It's so powerful that God made our brains this way. It, Pastor, you really lost it. No, it is truly amazing that God made our brains with this sensitivity. And, oh, by the way, he puts an emphasis on praise and worship and music. And science, humans, understand the power of worship or the power of music and singing and putting something to song. How many of you, I'm not, rhetorical question, how many times have you either heard a song on the radio, sang a song here in church, and you're going home, and that song just keeps going in your mind? You wake up in the morning, a song just keeps going through your mind. Maybe God's trying to give you a message. Maybe he's trying to teach you something. Maybe he's trying to tell you something through the song. It happens to me all the time. Yeah, you know. You say something to me and I got a song for you. In my heart there rings a melody. But think about that. You remember that. I know my dad used to say to me, he'd, he'd say, that song, that new song we say. I, all week. All week it would just go through my mind. And I know I'm not the only one, and I know he's not the only one. When a song blesses us, of course, when I'm leading, you know when a song blesses me. It's obvious. You get to see it. But when a song blesses you and a song speaks to you, that's why the words are so important, what we sing. The lyrics are critically important. What we sing, that they're biblically founded so that it's, it's teaching us, it's instructing us. And it's lift. Or, I don't want to get ahead of myself. What, remember, what is learned in song is remembered law. And that's just science. In my, there's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low, Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still. In all life's ebb and flow. There's within my heart a melody. There always is. And it's not just for me. Singing the songs in the power of the message. Think about the, just that, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider fell into the sea. It's teaching us, but understand something. I want to, that teaches us and instructs us and it gives us, we're repeating the scripture and the principles of the Bible. But it's, it's not just teaching us because what we recall when we are faced with circumstances is what we've been taught. In our physical lives, 
how we perform in a crisis is dependent upon how we were prepared or practiced. You know the fight or flight? What we do in a crisis, how we react, does not require or will, does not require, it, it, you can try, but your brain will revert to what you have done and practiced. Because what happens is when your adrenaline dumps, your brain goes into a loop. Your heart rate is up in the 200 range, and it's not AFib. And you will react based on your experience and what has happened. And I would say that music has a powerful effect on the brain. As scientists and research has told us, and if that is the case, if we will sing biblically, scriptural, if we will listen and per, let that soak into our minds and our, our whole being in crisis, in trials and circumstances, what will we recall? I will sing unto the Lord, for he is triumphed glorious. You recall the song pastor sang 72 times on Sunday morning. And Lord have mercy if I pick a song that isn't, I won't pick a song that's not biblically sound. And the principle is not scriptural. How we react in crisis is how we are prepared in what we've done and how we've practiced. And they tell us this in my other life. So it is true, too. Ask Rachel when she stood behind a door in my bedroom and scared me, tried to scare me once. I didn't hurt her, but she might have ended up on the bed quick, you know. I start walking in my room, and she thinks she's going to scare me. Instinct kicked in. Down she went on the bed. She didn't get hurt, though. I, pastor's abusing his daughter. But that's what happens. And that needs to be our instinct. And that's what God is speaking to us when he talks about when we are in a crisis. Calling on the name of the Lord. I know there's people that when they're in a situation, they just call Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My grandmother used to recite Jesus, Jesus. And she wasn't saying it in vain, but that's what she's calling on the name of the Lord. When she started that, oh, the Holy Ghost, oh, when she got the Holy Ghost on her. What evangelist was praying for, and he said he got more blessed from the Holy Ghost coming from her than him. Spiritually speaking, when we praise and worship and fill our hearts and minds with songs that teach and instruct us according to God's word, we will respond with what we retrieve. And what we retrieve will be what, God, what we have ingested and filled our mind and our hearts with. See, practice what we have ingested, what we have filled our minds and our hearts with, is what we will respond with in times of crisis and times of trial. As a worship leader, it's not up to me to create a mood. It's up to me to create a memory. From the scripture. If we're trying to create a memory, the music lyrics are critically important. An author said this, this is a great quote, does our music move us into a moment or form us for a lifetime of faithfulness? 
That's powerful. It's not a question of our songs teach, but what does it teach us? What is it teaching us? And secondly, it instructs us, and secondly, it strengthens our faith. Not only is the song of Moses and Miriam a declaration of God's miracle, it can be, fa- it can be a faith builder and a strengthen, to strengthen our faith. We sing of the great things that God has done, and it reminds of us, us of his abilities and that we can trust him. And that, again, that song is obviously still sung today. Remember the quote, what is learned in song is remembered long. As we previously said, the Psalms are filled with prayers, lamentations, lamenting, proclamations, proclaiming the answers to prayer, and praising God for his faithfulness, his mercy, his grace, his love. And let's look at just a couple of examples. Psalm 43, declare me innocent, O God. Defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars. Is there anybody here that maybe this might not apply in our lives at some point or another? I'm sure none of you have ever been lied about. I'm sure of you have never had people at enemies that are coming after you for something. Rescue me. Verse 2, for you are God, my only safe haven. Who do we turn to? Who are you going to call? And it's not Ghostbusters. It's God. Why have you tossed me aside? Okay, now he's asking the Lord. But he's in prayer. He's talking to the Lord. Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. There while I go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy, I will praise you with my harp, O God. My God, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Do you see the emotions that are going through him? As he's writing this, or he's putting this to song. Can you understand, can can you insert yourself in some of those circumstances? I'm sure we can. Psalm 95 that we've heard here many times. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The seas belong to him, for he made his his hands and formed the dry land. Two, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. We have a prayer in the one psalm that has a prayer and has a praising the Lord and exalting the Lord. And here... We have an exalting and proclaiming the Lord in his greatness. And now, another pro, uh, in Psalm 18, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. How many songs are in that were in there that we sing have sung to, in in the past? Just in those three verses, the sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. In Psalm 20, I love this verse, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. Who? 
Those that trust in horses and chariots are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and we stand upright. Praise the Lord. But see, this is stuff to sing. This is stuff to to have in our, our brains. Why? Because our brains, God has made our brains sensitive to music so that when we praise and worship him, we are teaching ourselves his scripture when we use biblically sound doctrine, what praise and worship. It's teaching us and it's strengthening our faith saying, wait a minute, God threw all the Pharaoh and the Red Sea and, and covered them with the water. And we can sing about that. And it can help me in my time of struggle. We can read psalm after psalm. Yeah, there's 150 of them. As examples of the psalmist communing with the Lord in song for a variety of of situations and reasons. Putting to song what is in his heart and his mind. Singing of the goodness of God. All my life. You have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Glory to God. I love that song. We're going to do it one of these days. It teaches and instructs us and encourages and strengthens our faith. We're wired, saints. For music. We're wired to have music affect our brains. What we ingest in our spirit will affect our Christian walk. Just as important, you know, we think about it and in, in we're supposed to eat healthy foods. And I'm working on that. I eat healthy foods. It's just the, the portion of how much. I, now, if you eat healthy foods, if you eat more healthy foods... Meaning, if you increase the amount of healthy foods, doesn't it make it better? No, I guess not. I can do the six times a day. It's the portions I have the issue with. So I'm working on that. God's working on that with me. It's even more important for us to be concerned with what we are ingesting into our minds and our hearts. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little lies, what you see. Because Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Instead, fear the one who can destroy the soul and the body in hell. The same study in 2014, the neuroscience study and other studies have found that in addition to teaching us, And our memory retrieving what we sing. Music affects healing, pain, and stress. It's all in the brain. It affects us. This is science confirming the word of God. Oh, no, no, they would never do that. If you tell them that, they probably will change it. But this is science confirming the word of God. When we sing biblically based and doctrinally sound songs, we are being taught the scripture. It's being retrieved in our memory and in our lives and in our circumstances and trials that we have. If we're going to create a memory and receive instruction, the music lyrics, I've already said, are critically important. Even the pagans and unbelievers understand the power of music. In Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar ordered everyone to bow down to the golden statue, the God that he had created, because he had nothing better to do. He was bored and thought he would create a new God. And he proclaimed this as soon as, I I knew this story, but and that's why I went to this. I find it interesting. The counterfeits that the world will have for what God has given his people in praise and worship. And he said to them, oh, when the music starts, everybody bows down to this golden statue. Why is he using music? Because he knew the power of music. You don't believe that, uh, 
Look at it in a, in a secular, look at the power of music in a secular. What do they do? You listen to some things and people, it, people that are doing things they shouldn't, it sets the mood for them. Remember, I don't even know if they still, remember what the backward masking was the thing? Where if you played a record backwards, there was actually lyrics that you were being subliminally exposed to that you didn't know about? What we ingest determines our Christian walk. What we hear in determines our Christian walk. What we see, what we are, what we are repeating determines our Christian walk. And singing a song remember, is re, remember, put to song is remembered long. And what we are singing impacts our life. If we believe that God had a reason for everything that he does, then he had a reason that he created our brain sensitivity and reaction to music for his purpose and, and reasons for his glory. And further, that he intended for our praise and worship to him to also impact our lives in such a way that we would learn his word that our lives might glorify him. Isn't that interesting? I told you it was a deeper thought. It was taking it deeper. So science, human science says we have found and God's like, yeah, hmm, took you long enough. You, we, but really, if you think about it, music has been all the way, I mean, back to the scripture. Look at when, of course, here's David, he's anointed king. But wait, you got to go out and be shepherds some more. But when Saul is given the uh, crazy spirit because he defied God, what did they bring him in to bring peace? Music. I love it how two God sent David to be the one that's going to, he's being the one that's playing the harp for him and he's the one that's going to succeed him. Saul doesn't realize it right away, but when he does, he keeps throwing spears at him, try to kill him, then chases him. God's telling us this for a reason. I didn't just stumble upon this by chance. And if that's what we think, then you can think that. But I'm telling you differently that God's putting something together here with this series. He's trying to teach us the importance, not just of praise and worship, but that it needs to be biblically sound. And it doesn't have to always recite the words of the Bible exactly, but the principles of a song need to have a biblical foundation because we'll remember it. And when we use those words, when we sing, we sang it today, Lord bless you and keep you. It's right out of the scripture. This is the time. When true worshipers will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, he's holy, he's worthy, he's mighty. It's teaching us. Praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Holy Spirit, glory to God. And that's what we should be as Christians, as believers, that should be the basis of our songs. And I'm not saying that, you know, every song that out there that doesn't is, but we have to be careful how much we expose ourselves. I'm not saying that every secular song is evil either. But I was thinking this today, or I was thinking this song as, as I was preparing this message. 
Would we rather be singing, I will call upon the Lord, or I will sing unto the Lord, be his triumph gloriously, or don't break my heart, my achy, breaky heart. Which song do you think is more encouraging? I couldn't help it. And you wouldn't expect anything different. If science is telling us something that we already know, I already know, but I want us to understand how infinitely wisdom, God's wisdom is in speaking to us. That music affects the brain. Science tells us this. And God, I believe and I submit to you that God did it with an intended purpose. So that when we praise and worship him, and he tells us to. He's seeking those who will praise and worship him. Not only is he being glorified, but it's working in our lives. It's working in our lives that we might be impacted, that we might be changed, that we might be renewed, that we might be strengthened in the power of his word, the word of God. To teach us, as Paul told Timothy, because why? Because we need every teaching we can get. We need every reminder of the Word of God that we can get. Why? Because what Paul was telling Timothy is happening today. We're living it, saints. We're living every chapter of it. And that's why the message is so important. Because God is saying we need the word of God in our lives in every aspect to the point where we can, it's just every part of our life because we need it. And he already said it more than once, we will need it to sustain us if we are going to make it and if we are going to finish the race, we will need that word to sustain us. So God is encouraging us. To worship and praise him. And praise him with the scripture. Praise him with your heart and all that is within you. Because it's glorifying him. And it's impacting us. You and I. Would you bow your head? Lord, I thank you today. That you are on the throne. Lord, I thank you and praise you that you are so awesome that we can learn science and understand you revealed your mysteries to us of what you're trying to do. And Lord, I pray today Lord, that we have been taught and we understand how important your work in our lives and how important your word is and that it should be in the songs that we sing. It should be in the music that we hear because it has an effect on our brains and it affects us spiritually. Lord, I thank you and praise you for your speaking here today. That you confirm your word with signs and wonders. And Lord, I, I thank you that you give us and you explain the mysteries of your word. Sometimes we don't understand it all. But as time passes, as time goes on, you give us greater and greater understanding. The more we seek, the more we will find. And Lord, I, I just am so grateful and thankful today that you're here today in this place. Lord, I pray that we would 
take what you have said and we would heed your words. We would heed the words that you have spoken to us directly and as we read, sing, and listen to your word. Now, Lord, I pray a, a blessing on each and every person here today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How about we sing that song, The Blessing, in closing, if the worship team would join me. Yes? No? Glory to God. We'll sing that in closing and we'll close it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. today too.
everybody said amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise this thing. Hallelujah. Yeah, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.